Hello! My name is Allison Tiemann, and this is Honey Badger Radio. And I have recently acquired a new skill set. I can use OBS. And also, we have the bandwidth for me to do live streams through the main channel, through the Badger Cave. Finally, it's been, a, it's been a long time coming. So I thought to celebrate the acquisition of these new abilities, that I would do a live stream by myself of myself responding to an article. And lo and behold, a patron, a supporter of Honey Badger Radio, sent me an article that he thought would be really great to cover. And I looked at the title. I haven't actually looked, I haven't actually read this article. So we're all going to experience this with fresh eyes together. But I looked at the title of this and I'm like, yeah, I think so. I think that, I think this could be a good article to cover together at on my first ever solo live stream on the Honey Badger Radio channel. And incidentally, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and share it around and leave a comment below saying, yeah, I'd like to see more of this. This is awesome. I want you to, I want to see you respond to more articles. So let's get started. I just have to change this. All right. Yes, indeed. This is the article from The Guardian. It is titled, Upward thrusting buildings ejaculating into the sky. Do cities have to be so sexist? It's, it's, this, is, this is a real peach, isn't this, guys? Oh my goodness, this is, I just can't wait to unwrap this present. And here we see the Chicago skyline with the river and all of the bridges fully erect. One would have said that they're just up in order to, you know, allow a boat egress through. So this could even be considered to be vulvic. But no, this, this, this is definitely phallocracy in action. The phallocentric phallocracy that exists only to subjugate women to men in action. Let me just, let me just, uh, before we go forward, it looks like this is... This is, this, yeah, it looks like it's going good. So let, let's just dive right in. Let's, let's begin our tour of this Guardian article, this magnificent philosophical question and answer session. Perhaps a struggle session would be more appropriate to call it. Okay. Oh my God. I, I, I just have to mention, just, I have to mention the, the picture title. More additions to the phallic parade. Seriously, this is not April 1st, so I assume this isn't April Fool's. This is, this is being seriously advanced by in architecture of all places in the Guardian. In the Guardian section on architecture by a woman, I presume a woman, I guess I shouldn't assume his or her pronouns, but the name is Leslie Kern. Okay, so this is seriously being advanced by the Guardian. You know, maybe maybe at the end there'll be this is just joking at the end of all of this, but I highly doubt it. But the tagline to this video is more additions to the phallic parade question mark. You can hear the tears in her voice. Street bridges over the Chicago River. They're they're becoming erect. You see, they're not they're not allowing a boat to go through. What is happening? is they're becoming turgid in order to oppress all of the women around them. Okay, this is a thing. All right, let's, let's do the first, the first subject line. Toxic masculinity is built into the fabric of our urban spaces, writes Leslie Kern, author of new book, Feminist City. <laughs> She's selling a freaking book. <laughs> Okay, and the results aren't just divisive, they can be lethal. That, that is a very strong statement. I would like to know how building codes currently, I mean, sure, there's probably some things that people are overlooking that could be more safe, but how could building things taller than they are wide, aside from like earthquakes, uh, if earthquakes are mentioned, I... I, I don't, let me just get into it. Uh, that just it seems to be a very, very big statement to say that 
buildings are built to be phalluses and they men prefer to build buildings as phalluses even though that makes them lethal or maybe it's the phallic shape that makes it's a big statement let's see if let's see if they support it i want to take some bets oh and incidentally if you want to send super chats through i will answer them i might take a break halfway through if if there are a lot of them all right first sentence glass ceilings and phallic towers mean streets and dark alleyways road names and statues of men from the physical to the metaphysical the city is filled of, with reminders of masculine power what glass ceilings yeah, but a glass ceiling until you guys appropriated it a glass ceiling was simply a way to look at the sky and yet we rarely and mean streets and dark alleys how is that a symbol of masculine power it's just a I guess you could say it's a symbol of criminality. Are you saying that, Matt? Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, you could define masculinity as criminality, and now you're saying that criminality is a symbol of masculine power? And this, is, this feels very solipsistic, but okay. And yet we rarely talk of the urban landscape as an active participant in gender equal inequality. An active participant. So the urban landscape is actively oppressing women. A building, no matter how phallic, isn't actually misogynist, is it? No. <laughs> Surely a skyscraper isn't responsible for sexual harassment, the wage gap, or even the glass ceiling, whether it has a literal one up top or not. No. No. Yeah, there is no connection unless you're insane, but I'm guessing that this particular article is not going to be uh, really tied to sanity very much. All right. That said, our built environments can still reflect patterns of gender-based discrimination. To imagine the city and its structures as neutral places where complicated human social relations are staged is to ignore the simple fact that people build these places. Okay, the, I, I guess you're right. I I guess because men built these places, obviously they hate women. All right. As the feminist geographer Jane Dark has said, it's, it's strange because cities tend to be majority women because women prefer to live in them. In fact, I have an anecdote. I live in the country because I don't particularly like cities, and it's not because they're phallocentric phallocracies that remind me, that rub my nose in the, in the, the, the masculine power but simply, I don't like cities. Um, and we have sort of a rotating series of doctors in the hospital in our town. And one of them, even though he enjoyed living in the country, moved to the city. Why? Because his, mo his wife wanted to live there in order to be able to shop. Urban environments are majority female because they appeal more to women. Or maybe women have more access to them. So if cities appeal more to women, thus there are more women in them, are men building cities to oppress women or to please them? And it just so happens that men particularly want to please them, so they end up building a lot of cities. I, I don't know. Okay. But I think her implication is that because men built them, they're bad. As the feminist geographer, Jane Dark, has said, our cities our patriarchy, written in stone, brick, and glass, and concrete. In other words, that's just an assertion that isn't, like, that isn't proved, that's just somebody asserting something. In other words, cities reflect the norms of societies that built them. And sexism is a deep-rooted norm. Well, that's a lovely assertion. Do you have anything to back it up? Anything at all? Anything to back up the notion that our society was built for the express purpose of benefiting men over women. Because if you ask most people, they don't want to benefit men over women. Like the vast majority. Somehow our society is built for the benefit for men over women. And yet if you asked every single person in it, almost all of them would say that women should be prioritized for provision and protection and benefit over men. Almost every one of them would say. Except for maybe me, 
And I would say, well, I think it should be more equal, which makes me a misogynist. <laughs> All right. Okay. As far back as 1977, American poet and professor of architecture named Dolores Hayden wrote an article with the explosive headline, Skyscraper Seduction, Skyscraper Rape. <sighs> Feminists, could you start writing things with your hands out of your pants? Like, do you really have to write things and it's really obvious that you're, you're, you're flicking the bean while you do it? Hayden tore into the male power fantasies embodied in this cerebral urban form. The office tower, she wrote, is one more addition to the procession of phallic monuments in history, including poles, obelisks, spires, columns, and watchtowers. All right. Poles. In order to fly a flag, a flag, we want it to be visible for a large distance. In order to fly one, you put it on a pole because the visibility is essential, so you put it up high on a pole. Also, interestingly enough, people can carry poles, so you can move flags around. Okay, Obelisks. You might have a point, but as feminists often say, Egypt, Egypt was a matriarchy, or at least they assert it. I don't think it's actually true. And Egypt was big about the obelisks, so... Maybe it was the female gaze that caused everybody to be like, oh, let's put obelisks everywhere in Egypt. So that's really where it came from. Might have been in other places beforehand, but uh, spires. Eh. I'm not going to go over that one. It's just a repetition. Columns. Okay, thing about columns. Big thing about columns that you have to remember is columns support something. And they usually support something in a way in which you want people to able to move underneath the thing they're supporting because you know you want it to shield them from the elements or the sun so you create a column because it allows people to move freely underneath the thing that the column is supporting if you want to create a wall that sort of stops that so columns support things that's why they are long and longer than they are wide <laughs> purely utilitarian just like the flagpole is utilitarian. The, the column is utilitarian. And the watchtower, of course, is going to be taller than it is wide because you want to watch for the same reason you, you want to pull a lift a, a flag. It makes it very visible. Being on the, a watchtower allows you to see large amounts of area around you. Okay, if you're going to read, read sexism into physics, I think you're nuts. How does this get published in The Guardian? How do you... Okay, if you're a liberal... All right, all right, fair enough. If you're on the left, how do you answer to this? This is your publication. This is the insanity that you pay for, that you wish to see. It is right here. Answer to it. Okay. Where architects unironically use the language of base, shaft, and tip while drawing upward thrusting buildings, ejaculating light into the night sky. Oh boy. This doesn't belong anywhere near any kind of serious publication. Like, how is it that the Guardian can get away with publishing this and people consider it to be authoritative on anything and not just an outlet for propaganda? How is that? Okay, th that's the real question here. You know, this, this should be, people should be, somebody, there should be somebody out there reading this and says to the Guardian, and it takes their, it takes their license to report on the news, news and just says, yeah, you, lo you lost that. You're now basically a tabloid. Ridiculous. If the sexism of the city began and ended with architectural symbolism, I would have happily written a grad school essay about this and then turned my attention to more pressing matters. Oh boy, the world would have been better if you had just lost this nonsense, but you didn't. But society's historical and ongoing ideas about the proper gender roles for men and women, organized, organized around a narrow binary, are built right into our cities, and they still matter. And how is that binary any different than your binary that says men are eternally responsible? Everything a man do oppresses women, therefore men are defined as a gender by oppression, and everything that men do oppresses women. Therefore, women as a gender are defined by being victims of men. 
Like, that's a gender binary. And in fact, including gender fluid people as victims of men, still, still a gender binary. As long as one gender, according to you, is oppressing everyone else, there is a binary. So don't give me, don't, 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 don't walk up here and start talking about the gender binary as if you are actually not existing in one or perpetuating one. Leslie, was it Leslie? Yes, it was Leslie. Leslie. They matter to me as a mother. Oh, God, it, you had children. Great. They matter to me as a busy professor who often finds herself in strange cities, wondering if it's okay to pop into the neighborhood pub alone. What? Ask any woman who's tried to bring a pram on a bus, breastfeed in a park, or go for a jog at night. She intuitively understands the city the message sends her. This place is not for you. No. These things are not sending you a message, you lunatic. Guardian, why are you employing schizophrenics to write articles for you? Or people who ascribe motives when there is none? The reason why it's difficult to bring a pram into public transit is because public transit is designed by definition to carry as many people as possible. So it's, it's just going to accommodate one type of commuter, which is somebody who is walking. In order to accommodate you fully in a way that makes you ultimately comfort, comfortable, you realize there would be a whole bunch of people who have to be unaccommodated in order to create, let's say, a pram train. In order to create a pram train that keep, makes you completely comfortable, they would have to increase the length of time they stay at the station, which means less trains overall, which means the commuters are going to be more inconvenienced getting to work so that you can take your kid on a leisure trip. I know this sounds really sexist, but you are not a priority when it comes to keeping a city running because when you are actually doing something that is basically leisure, okay? You enjoy the fruits of everyone else's labor in terms of taxes if you aren't actually paying for your children's education. You enjoy the fruits of their labor and paying for public transit, and they are laboring. God forbid the people who are laboring to provide these things for you get a little bit of priority. I mean, let's look at what happened in one of the Scandinavian countries when they decided to prioritize women, like yourself, during snow removal. The entire city ran to a halt because there was a reason why they prioritized those roots that men used because men were responsible for keeping the for the see keeping the city running and no other reason than that you want to be prioritized even though you're not responsible for keeping keeping what you rely on running that's an unbelievable level of entitlement and it's, this is delusional levels of entitlement delusional how does someone so delusional manage to get an article published in the guardian all right I, I, is it okay to pop into the neighborhood pub alone um yes like I, I i assume if you're using the word pub you've been in you you are from england usually the neighborhood pubs I, at least the ones that i've seen are full of of men and women why would you have a prop are you taking your child to a neighborhood pub well that's yeah, underage children in establishments that serve liquor you know that's that's usually considered bad and you know who probably made that rule I, I would imagine if i had to guess it was some group either affiliated with or similar to mothers against drunk driving who don't want to see minors in places of ill repute okay Oh, but alone. Go pop into the neighborhood pub alone. I'm sure it's fine. I think you're... Okay. Breastfeed in a park. Well, just put a blanket over it. Okay? Go for a jog at night. Just do it. I mean, it's not like you're less safe than men, to be quite frank. 
I mean, we got this idea that men are safer, but actually I think we just care less, to be honest. You know, and people care more about your safety, so they're constantly talking to you about how you're not safe because they want you to remain safe. So it's, it's, um, I apologize. My cats are really clingy right now. They're, they're oppressing me. It's, they're not just, it's not just because they want my attention. It's because they, they, they're objectifying me as a source of attention. Oh, God. And the city is not sending any message to you, lunatic. Yeah, the city can be a place of great freedom. Yeah, a, a woman would say that. Since women are very attracted to cities, they, they are the majority of the population in them. So I imagine they enjoy them, since they're the majority of the population in them, in many, in many urban centers. And yet everything is not exactly to their liking, because men exist in that space too. And sometimes have to be prioritized because they maintain the space. The anonymity of urban life breeds possibilities easily stifled in a claustrophobic small town or suburban enclave. The anonymity, what are you doing? Like, are you bombing things? The anonymity of urban life, what are you doing? Why do you need anonymity? <sighs> Education, work, pleasure, politics. The city broadens our horizons and gives us choices our foremothers never had. Despite its hostilities, it remains our best hope for radical change. This is the paradox that drove me to write a book, rather than a grad school essay. <laughs> Not money, right? Feminist city claiming space in a man-made world that takes on fear, motherhood, friendship, and activism, as well as the joys, perils of being alone to show not only where our cities have failed, but to imagine where they, what they could become. You mean what men could really work hard to create for you? Because this is some new thing that you need. I mean, who, who's going to be creating this? It's, it's, I don't think it's going to be women, because if it's women, you'll complain endlessly. It's going to be men. So this is your new list of directives to the group of people you say hates you so much. It's so funny. It's like, oh, men hate us. They hate us. They hate us. Oh, by the way, men, here's a bunch of things that you need to do for us. And nobody ever calls them out on this. Like, very few people do. This obvious inconsistency, this obvious inexplicable and ridiculous logic of that. Oh, goodness. Now we're going into the Industrial Revolution. During the Industrial Revolution, in which many men died to build the cities that I am now complaining about, the populations of Europe, of European cities and many other countries in the colonized world grew rapidly. Flashpoints for moral panic about how gender norms were changing the teeming streets threatened the neatly defined spaces that kept the classes apart, increasing the risk that women especially would have their virtue tainted by rubbing shoulders with workers, immigrant, poor people, the other. So interesting how she frames this in such a way as the other excludes women. And also, do you think it was only men who were concerned about the virtue of women being involved with the quote unquote other? I don't think so. I think there were a lot of women, cam in fact, I think it's mostly women campaigning on issues of virtue. Echoing department stores and New York Ladies Mile, a stretch of shop for the well-to-do created at the end of, you guys really, you really are just, you just, you just, you, 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 you mm. at the end of the 19th century, new spaces and entire urban districts, sorry, they're, they've decided that they're going to start dumping things on the floor, as cats do. New spaces and entire urban districts were built with the intention of controlling high-status white women's exposure to the messy public realm. Because, of course, that was not what they wanted. So this isn't, an, you know, the fact that white women had a part of the city built just for them and everybody else was removed from it, that is not evidence of their privilege. And, you know, who was removed from it, incidentally? You know, like if there's any womenists listening to this, this female, this white feminist is saying black people being removed from an urban space because they might be a threat to white women is somehow oppressing the white women. I'm just putting that out there. It seems a little bit entitled. Controlling high status white women's exposure to the messy public realm. Uh-uh-uh. Let, let's correct this. White women didn't want 
to associate with things that are people that would besmirch their virtue. Therefore, they got their men to construct an entire little world for them, entire little Disney park just for white women inside the urban space. After all, what would be worse than be considered a public woman? I don't know, being considered a female men's rights activist like you guys do to me. I mean, the, the idea of shaming other women is, it, it's not necessarily something perpetuated by men. In fact, it isn't perpetuated by men. It is a conflict and competition between women. And maybe they didn't want to be considered a public woman. You wouldn't want to be considered a female men's rights activist. You got your own category of untouchable women. So I, w what's the difference here? This is, this is freaking hilarious. It's like the, 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 the women on, in top, on top who, who have the greatest social power can decide, tell their men, okay, this is the space that I want. These are the people I want to exclude. And then the next generation, they're like, oh my God, men made a cage for me made a cage for our mothers. Well, this is, the, this is the space I want to occupy. This is the place I want to exclude. And then the next generation, oh my God, men made a cage for our... No, they didn't. They created a space to your virtuous specifications. And then you changed your mind. And you took, <laughs> failed to take... And then women changed their mind and they failed to recognize that this is what they've been asking men to do all along. At the other end of a spectrum... Those who fell into grinding poverty as, or sex work were also in need of tight control, lest their failings infect others. Working women were blamed for the breakdown of the traditional family and its consequences, namely men straying into gambling and alcohol addiction. Who blamed them? The prohibitionists? A movement entirely, entire, almost entirely by women? Even Frederick Engels feared that women working outside the home was too great a disruption to society. Charles Dickens suggested that fallen women should be diverted to the colonies, where their low status could be ignored by the surplus of, of men in, turn, in need of wives. Again, it's women who determine these, these, these levels of status. Women of the upper classes wanted to feel superior to women of the lower classes. They wanted to morally judge their behavior. They wanted to not have to associate with them, okay? Charles Dickens is saying, send them somewhere where they can be seen as respectable and valued. And you're saying, oh my God, Charles Dickens is a horrible human being for suggesting that, mm, okay. If the disorder of cities was a threat to certain women and the disorder of certain women a threat to cities, and who decided who those certain women were? Do you think it's always men? Do you think it's always men who are deciding the women who are beyond the pale? Because I can tell you right now, I've been decided that I'm beyond the pale as a female men's rights activist. And for the most part, it isn't men deciding that. It's women like you. Women like you get me excluded from spaces like, you know, writing articles for guardians, getting my books published, being able to hold a convention, being able to go to a convention. It's women like you who get me excluded from your spaces because you don't like us, fallen women. And then you turn around in the next generation and say, you appropriate the experiences of women like me, women who weren't part of the hierarchy or are in the top of the hierarchy, the feminine hierarchy. You appropriate them for yourselves. You appropriate the experiences of black women for yourself. Unbelievable. And then you deny your own role in constructing this entire thing as a, a, a woman of wealth and whiteness, shall we say. A socially connected woman of wealth and whiteness. Ugh. If the disorder of the cities was a threat to certain women and the disorder of certain women a threat to cities, the suburbs could provide a solution. Early ads for the London tube depicted such areas as Golden Gre Golder Golders Green as refuges where women could be sa would be safe and conveniently preoccupied with homemaking and child rearing, while fathers could easily access the city via expanded underground routes. <sighs> Who do you think is driving the home sales? Who do you think wants to be safe? Who do you think... Actually, no. no. Men also want women to be safe. 
this is such an exercise in bad faith. Like everything men do, this woman, everything men do, this woman could find some way as framing it as oppression. Everything. Now, I could say that's mean to men, and it is mean to men, but on the other hand, she is basically telling men how they're all powerful, which I guess in a certain circumstance could be really flattering. You know, what can you do? All right. In the mass suburbanization of North America in the 1950s, the fix for gender norms that had begun unstable during the war was quite explicit. Developers, said Hayden, argued that a particular kind of house would help the veteran change from aggressive air ace to a commuting salesman who mowed the lawn. That house would also help a woman change from Rosie the Riveter to a stay-at-home mom. Reestablishing these norms was seen as necessary. So, reestablishing military, military men to civilian life or reacclimatizing them to civilian life you, you, you just completely omit, you just completely just, just jump over that and, ide- and, and focus solely on the woman. Is that really establishing a masculine norm? Is that, is that really establishing a gender norm? Or is that bringing normalcy back to men and women? Reestablishing these norms was seen as necessary to ensure full access to employment for returning male soldiers. What's less often understood is that this would enable access to another, no less vital kind of labor force. The unpaid woman whose care would keep the urban economy running despite being underappreciated or simply unacknowledged. Stay-at-home mothers do not keep the urban economy running. Homesteading women keep the rural economy running. Stay-at-home mothers do not keep, and I'm not saying that you, you know, People can arrange their relationships in every, any way that they want. But stay-at-home mothers do not keep the urban economy running. They keep their men more efficiently motivated to work, sure. So in that case, they do. But their work doesn't. And the reason why it doesn't is it went from being productive work to being consumptive work. At the same time as it went from being a full-time 12-hour-a-day, six-day-a-week job to a three-hour-a-day, five-day-a-week hobby, okay? There was a significant reduction in the amount of labor that women had to do to run a household. And that was a huge change, and it was brought about by men caring enough to invent labor-saving devices. Why couldn't the suburban housewife in the 50s and 60s now only required to do three hours of labor a day, three hours of not incredibly hard labor a day, why couldn't she invent whole new branches of science or philosophy or art? No. She invented a whole new body of resentment. Feminism. Well, she didn't invent it. Actually, that was also a man. But she expanded upon the original philosophical foundation of it. <sighs> What's less often, so you know, the, the, the labor of suburban wives after they had a whole bunch of labor-saving devices was not essential. It's why people now, before it was very difficult to be both a breadwinner and somebody who managed the productive aspects of a household. It's difficult to be both. But now there can be a lot more singletons because, again, taking care of household is like a three-hour-a-day job now. Uh, and, and this is the complaint in the 50s and 60s. Women, oh my God, we, we now only have to work three hours a day because our husbands buy all of the mechanical labor to reduce our, our labor by nine hours a day. They've bought all of this stuff with their salaries, our job, and their own job, and now we have all of this time. Geez, gratitude would be would seem to be uh, in order, but no, 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 no. We can't have gratitude. We can't have gratitude, and we can't have a new enlightened population of America is free to do all kinds of intellectual exploration. No, new, no, new. No. 
We have to have resentment. Okay. All right, but has the responsibility for care work been distributed equally between men and women? No, no, sorry. I, I jumped ahead because I'm a bit distracted by the care work that I have to do that is completely unremunerated by the government in order to calm this little cat down. What's less often understood is that this would enable access to another, more, no less vital kind of labor force. The unpaid woman whose care work would keep the urban economy running despite being unappreciated or simply unacknowledged. You sacrificed a three hour a day lifestyle. You got jobs and you expanded that to 10 hours a day. Congratulations. And then you called that empowerment and freedom. Surely this suburban malaise has passed. After all, few women are now full-time homemakers throughout their lives. And few men. It's so hilarious. Full-time homemaker, three-hour-a-day job. Because the man picks up the slack by buying a whole bunch of uh, mechanical devices to reduce that from 12 hours a day. And yet that was somehow oppression of women. At, you know, this, this seems just wrong. It just it, If you think about it, it just makes no sense. After all, few women are now full-time homemakers throughout their lives, and few men want to be little more than an emotionally distant breadwinner. They never did. This is like a complete fiction about men in the past, that they were emotionally distant breadwinners and not involved fathers. Most of them cared very deeply about their children, all the way back into the Roman Republic. But has the responsibility for care work been redistributed equally between men and women? Has it been reevaluated and properly reenumerated? Have we re recognized our, reorganized our cities in ways that would make shared care work visible and convenient? Shared care work? Well, first of all, time use surveys find pretty consistently that there's, it, it's basically even between the genders. If you include things like What is it called? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm starting to lose my steam with this article. It's so, well it's, well, it's actually fairly old school. In some ways, it's a little nostalgic, you know? It's pretty old school feminism. Like we've been seeing some really wickedly weird forms lately. And this, is, this is fairly old school radical feminism. Everything oppresses women. The, the urban landscape is a horror, a horror show for women, etc. Um, we need to do more to organize the city around women because, you know, 60% female population isn't good enough. We need to get it to 80%. And thereupon, it'll probably collapse because all of the people maintaining it will be gone. But regardless, hardly much of the work has simply shifted to the shoulders of un other underpaid women, nannies, personal care workers, cleaners, often recent immigrants and people of color who you are exploiting. How can you simultaneously exploit these people and then claim their problems as your own? Your brain on feminism, folks. Their precarious conditions of employment continue to make their labor mostly invisible. It remains deeply undervalued and outside of the home because they're working for other women. They're doing the job that these women normally would do, except they prefer to do another job and pay these women peanuts to do the job that they've abandoned. Okay, the consequences have proven deadly as COVID-19 rampages throughout our cities. Take the crisis in long terror care home, long-term care homes. What the heck is this individual arguing for? Care for elderly and disabled people has been largely privatized in many countries, leaving homes dependent on a low-wage labor force who must cobble together a living by working at multiple facilities, most likely taking crowded public buses and trains between them. This factor rapidly spread COVID-19, exposing the most vulnerable members of society to frequently fatal illness. Because cities have failed to prioritize care as a public good, while per per perpetuating the notion that it's women's work, employees have risked their lives for pennies and the elderly have died because staff don't earn a living wage. Well, that's actually a reasonable problem, okay? All right, fair enough. Has nothing to do with wealthy white elite women being oppressed by cities. Like, you're, you're, you're spreading this everywhere. It's like you're pissing all over everybody else's victimhood. As It isn't like it. You are. You're saying, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. Yeah, you know, you're subsuming it. 
as a as a, a white socially privileged woman you are subsuming this in order to bolster your own claim to victimhood and also what is the solution to this okay you pay uh, care elderly care workers more well then the women who are working and not caring for their elderly get see less of their paycheck it's got to come from somewhere Another deadly consequence is the global rise in domestic violence. Oh, boy. I mean against men. If the violence against women is ever given any attention and are ever given any attention, it's generally along the lines of women facing stranger change. Yes, because there are no campaigns to bring attention to the fact that women are victims of domestic violence. Like, none. What world is this? <sighs> This thing is done. It needs to be done again, but harder. Having to limit our movements, adjust our clothing, and travel in packs, avoiding dark alleyways. You probably don't have to do that. To be quite frank, you're in far less danger than a man. But nobody wants to say that because you want that victimhood. Like, seriously, I could tell you, you know, um, domestic violence against men is a really big issue. They also have to worry about it. Violence in cities towards men is a bigger issue than it is towards women. You don't need to fear these things uniquely as a woman, but you do. And the reason why you do is because you want to use your victimhood as a weapon. The vast majority of violence, including fatal violence against women and girls worldwide, is perpetuated in the home, and lockdowns have exasperated its every cause. These include stress financial pressure, isolation, and a lack of interventions from family, friends, and colleagues. Women are frightened to access shelter services and have little safe space or time to reach out for help. And not only is it impossible, almost impossible to move during the pandemic, loss of employment for many also means they can't afford to leave anyway. Yeah, well, men have no services, almost none. They're basically stuck. These problems weren't created by coronavirus. The pandemic is merely exposing the fact that cities have been content to ignore domestic violence, not seeing it as an urban problem deeply connected to such issues as housing, employment, transportation, child care. Oh, so now we're using domestic violence to pursue some kind of social policy. Victimhood is a weapon. Ultimately, tackling domestic violence may mean unsettling the heterosexual nuclear nuclear family in ways that would be deeply disruptive to the status quo, namely disruptive to the long-standing reliance on single-family home as a place of unpaid care work, a disruption cities can ill afford given their reluctance to fund child care, subsidize housing, and prevent violence. If you get men rid of men out of your homes, you will see such a wave of criminal violence. Like, that, that's their ultimate aim. No father in a home at all. That's it. Men out of the home. That is their ultimate aim. It's the ultimate aim of Black Lives Matter. And it is the ultimate aim of this woman. It is the ultimate aim of feminism. And yet they also want to defund the police. It's some sort of bizarre idea that somehow the police are responsible for the criminal violence that happens and not fatherlessness. So get rid of all fathers. Get rid of all cops. Nothing can go wrong. Nothing at all can possibly go wrong from that. These people live in la-la land. The good news is that you know, the biggest thing to prevent violence, a father raising his children. Number one, biggest thing that you could possibly do to prevent violence. And what she's advocating for, the exact opposite. The good news is that women haven't been twiddling our thumbs waiting for city planners or politicians to solve these problems. Oh. In fact, women have been coming up with their own designs for cities and homes for well over a century. In 1889, Jane Addams founded Hull House in Chicago, a social settlement for young unmarried women and immigrants who needed a safe home and a sense of community. Hmm. I see. Okay. Her legacy echoes through the activism of other women who just won't wait. 
The Focus E15 moms who occupied their hostel in 2013 when faced with sudden evictions by Newham, Newham's council in London. The Moms for Housing group, which squatted in a vacant mansion to protest against rampant gentrification in the Bay Area of San Francisco. And we shouldn't forget that Black Lives Matter, perhaps the most transformative movement of our time, was funded by black women. Also want to get rid of the nuclear family. You know, the safest place for children to be raised in, fathers in the home, most likely to decrease the rate of violence, criminal violence. But no, let's just defund the police, get rid of fathers, see what happens. City planners, architects, and politicians can make a difference if the will is there. In the Aspen District of Vienna, all of the streets and public spaces are named after women. In Tokyo, trains have carriages set aside for particular times for women, disabled people, children, and carers. In Kingali, the capital of Rwanda, female street vendors have seen their safety and economic prospects improve with the building of secure permanent mini market markets that include space for breastfeeding. In Stockholm, snow plowing schedules, oh, I remember I covered that one, prioritize resident, residential streets, school zones, and public transit, and bike lanes. These interventions say to women, your contribution matters, your safety matters, your mobility matters. And what do they say to men? You don't matter. Because the only reason men were prioritized was because they had a job to do maintaining the infrastructure that women use. And also, the Stockholm snow removal, I'm pretty sure they're changing that because of the chaos it caused. But maybe they aren't. Maybe they haven't learned their lesson. Maybe we're going to restructure all of society to benefit the women, the people, who aren't responsible for maintaining it. Because they're not already benefited by the existence of this infrastructure. They also have to be benefited by the things that we do to assist men in maintaining the infrastructure. All benefit has to accrue to women. Even the benefit of being prioritized in, in those places where men are prioritized because they have to maintain the infrastructure that benefits women. Oh boy, a snake eating its tail. All right. The current situation offers an unprecedented opportunity for even bigger changes. One possibility comes via the anti-racism protests sweeping the globe. Defund the police. Because that's going to make you even feel that you're going to defund the police. You already feel like you can't go out at night. But let's get rid of the police. Because the police are well known for targeting white women with Guardian articles and books and published books. Oh, man. You're just appropriating someone else's victimhood. Transfer that money to affordable housing, childcare, and public transport all of which would dramatically improve women's lives in the way that increased policing never has. You realize that you guys criminalize domestic violence. Well, it was already criminal for somebody to assault another person, but you made cri domestic violence explicitly criminal and because you said it would be safer for women. So you spearheaded one of the biggest initiatives to increase police involvement in people's lives. And now you're saying, oh, no, that doesn't make people safe. Once again, it's like one generation of women says, this is, the, this is the place we want to occupy. And the next generation of women says, oh, no, that's just men oppressing us. Doing what we said is men oppressing us. And it's good to know that, you know, uh, increased policing has never made you safer, even though you demanded increased policing around domestic violence and rape. A second move, all these people suddenly deemed essential workers should be paid as if, they're, if our lives depend on them, because they do. Third, reinvest in the public realm by creating, okay, look, essential workers, they're doing the job, the specific essential workers that you called out are doing the jobs that women who have jobs don't want to do, that the caring work that they don't want to do. Those women will have to pay more. Third, reinvest in the public realm by creating accessible barrier-free spaces and transport systems that would allow everyone full access to the benefits of city living. So I'm guessing women-only carriages, like Tokyo. Fourth, and by no means final suggestion, seek out, listen to, 
and employ diverse groups of city dwellers in all areas of urban design, planning, policy making, politics, and architecture. The pandemic has shown us that society can be radically e reorganized if necessary. If necessary. Really? The pandemic has shown that. I think that it's actually shown the fragility of society. Radical reorganizing generally requires a fairly robust society like the society of the 1940s, reorganizing itself for war. This seems to have shown our society as being not very resilient. The pandemic has shown that society can be radically reorganized if necessary. Let's carry that lesson into creating the non-sexist city. I didn't get really, you know, from this article, I didn't get a really strong thesis on how to create a non-sexist city, aside from women's carriages, you know, uh, snow removal that prioritizes women. And, and it's so funny because if you think about it, prioritizing women, women first, isn't that benevolent sexism? Like, aren't you advocating for benevolent sexism here? or what you term benevolent sexism. Let's reorganize, let's radically re-envision the city to, to, to not only already be sort of orientated towards women, which is why cities are mostly occupied, or the majority of the population in cities is women, and women want to go there because of all the shopping opportunities. And then let's just do that. Let's also radically reorganize cities, which depend on male labor to exist, to deprioritize that male labor, the movement of that male labor in order to prioritize the movement of women. This is an astounding level of entitlement. It's, it's astounding that we live in a society where this woman can propose these things seriously, and yet we live in a society that prefers to benefit men over women. I think if we actually did, she would never have been published. She would have been told to shut up. Hell, in a society that actually was reasonable about its benefiting, benefiting women, she probably, somebody would have stood up that doesn't have like a, you know, I mean, a, a reasonable sized audience on YouTube, not huge. I mean, it's not spectacular, but somebody other than me, somebody with a larger audience and more people would have stood up and said, hey, maybe men need to be prioritized sometimes because they're maintaining the city that you enjoy. Okay. And also buildings are not phallic, literally. Space in a city is expensive. The way to maximize the space in a city, which is expensive, is by building up. I guess we could build down, but that's hugely expensive. And also, as um, the individual who sent this article to me said, you know, a friend of his responded, we need to build vast crevices to which we insert ourselves. Vast crevices in the ground to which we insert our civilization. <sighs> if we really did do that, if we really, if a society, if a city was a whole series of vast crevices carved into the mother earth, do you really think she wouldn't also be calling that phallic? Like, and, and, and part of the toxic masculinity. Because she, she would definitely frame it in that way. There's no way that we would get away for we'd get away with that kind of shit. Putting all of our industry into deep crevices in the mother in Mother Earth, like seriously, nothing satisfies these individuals. Nothing. Everything is is toxic masculinity. Everything is sexism. Everything is patriarchy. Everything is their victimhood, because their victimhood is a power. It's a power to compel men to do stuff, and they will never admit it. Not in a million years. Okay, let me see if we got any super chats here. I hope so, because I would like to see if you guys enjoyed this. Oh, we did. Okay, at least five or three. Okay, so Scapegoat asks, This lady refers to the Stockholm plow system as positive. Journalist research at its best. I don't think she's a journalist. She's just an author writing a promo for her book. She just really wants to get some money. Uh, she really wants to sell these books. She wants to move product. Have you not noticed that there's a lot of articles about authors with these kind of focuses that you know suddenly have a book that they need to sell, like a book that's coming out, and they do these articles? I just don't understand. Like, if you're on the left, how can you read this and think of it as being sensible in any anything but just give like stupidity, like? Answer to this. 
All right, Scapegoat gives me another $5 and says, Camille Peglia was wrong. Women wouldn't have us in grass huts. That's too phallic. We'd be in holes. Holes filled with water and mud. All right, Scapegoat says, two sentences in, and it reads like a BDSM romance novel. Anyone else feeling hot and bothered? No, because I don't really have rape fantasies. That's why I've never really got into the whole idea that our society is some kind of rape culture. All right. Okay, so that's it for the Super Chats. Unless anybody wants to send some now. Oh, look. I see that one of our, uh, one of our feminist viewers has popped in. She who shall not be named. Let's see if she's got any commentary of interest in here. I don't know if this is considered rude to actually read the, uh, the statements in the chat, but I will do so. Oh, she says, what a shame. Men are no longer men today. No, men are still men, I'm afraid. They still listen to what women tell them they want. And uh, I don't think that's going to change. You know, what we refer to as simping is just sort of male nature. Men want to pro provide and protect women. And they will do it even when those women are incredibly ungrateful, utterly entitled, and incapable of seeing what men actually are doing for them. Okay. Oh, and she, re she continues, don't hate us for having to fill in. Fill in what? You don't fill, women aren't filling in. Women's jobs, like, the jobs women do are essentially the same jobs they did before in the home, except in the workplace, okay? Men are still doing the jobs to maintain society. They're still doing all of the jobs that keeps, keeps the essential services that a civilization rely on. Our civilization can exist with plumbing, interior plumbing, Sanitation, heat, electricity, and internet, all of which are provided by men. So that's just reality. Women can lose almost all of their jobs, go back to the home, and our society would still be at the same technological level as it is now. This is the honest-to-God truth. Women have not filled in. Okay, I see anything else. <laughs> uh, she says, dads who supported their families used to be a thing too. Uh, you know what, guys? If you're listening here, why don't you donate a, show, a super chat in, in honor of our feminist troll or the troll who insists on seeing everything to blame, like men are to blame for everything. You know, let, let's, let's do this again. Richard, are you there? Are you watching this? You're usually game for a game of this. Anyway, I think I'm, I'm done with that. What I'm going to do is I am going to message Brian. I'm going to message him. He's going to come on. We'll have a chat. I'll be doing the back, uh, the uh, back seat drive or the front seat driving, actually. Not the back seat driving. That's what I did before. I'll be doing the driving, the actual driving behind the wheel. And let me just change this. There we go. And let me just change this. There we go. And we shall wait. We shall wait. Oh, there we go. There we go. I hear something. And it's not just my cat. <laughs> yeah. Hi. I right. can't hear you if you're talking. You're muted. Am I? Okay, just a sec. Here we go. Okay, you gotta unmute. Yes, and uh, for some reason. Loud as fuck. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay, what's up? Yeah, I'm just trying to get this working right. For some reason, there we go. There we go. Everything is good. Hey, look at that. I did this. It. it I. I did a thing, and it worked. All right. You've already been doing it for like five years, but. <laughs> <laughs> I did it five years after you, and. <laughs> As long as you caught up. Yeah, I caught up eventually. Women power! Now it's my thing. It can't be your thing. I did it first. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Mia. Why do you have to be the fly in the ointment? She has been all over this stream. I think I think she's she's she wants to tell everybody that cities cities aren't created 
in cat for cats and with cats in mind. They aren't. They aren't. No, not at all. There's mm. there's not enough not enough uh, litter boxes. Yeah, not enough cat lots of toys. Mice. Yeah, there's true enough. There's lots of mice, but there's just there's just not lots enough of prey. Not enough litter boxes and places for them to sit in trees, you know. And that's that you know it's 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 the human archery. It's the it's the horrible yes. oppression of of cats by humans. Okay. So I just finished that article. Uh mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about it. <laughs> I got to say this. I got to say this again. All right. The name of the article is Upward Thrusting Buildings Ejaculating it Into the Sky. Do cities have to be so sexist? Yep. Yeah, I was actually going to, um, I'm going to do that article for my patron only show. After the news show. Uh, as well. Yeah, after the news show today. Yeah, that was going to be my, it was either that or there was something about, um, you know, a, a black woman wrote a medium blog about how she's, you know, uh, angry with her boyfriend because he's, kind of like you know not um he's become fatigued from all of the race talk mm -hmm. and of course she thinks it's never enough but i don't know that that are that uh, medium blog seems to go on and on and on so I, I think i think um it's it's good to get back to some feminist cringe about yeah phallic buildings this isn't like a new argument so yeah you know, i know it's um, it's like it's uh, like i said during the stream it's sort of nostalgic all of this yeah all of this retarded arguments like patently yeah, I, silly I, I, arguments and at this point in time i'm like I, I actually asked on the stream like if you're part of the left how do you read this and not just be embarrassed for your entire philosophy i think this might be a poe even like i don't know like uh, they may have just been like you know what the guardian we we us at the guardian we haven't been getting clicks lately what what do we need to do? And people are like, you know what? We should just lean into, mm -hmm. lean into the stereotype. Let's just write a really stupid ass feminist article. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what this is. I don't know. Maybe not. I mean, uh, you know, maybe, um, uh, Leslie Kern here is a true believer and, uh, she genuinely can't leave her house because there's buildings outside and she's afraid one was going to rape her or something. So <laughs> it pretty much sounded like that to be quite honest. Yeah. It was just, I, I don't even know what to, I don't even know what to say. All right. So yeah. moving on to uh, the latter half of our, our little, a little adventure here. So you are doing the news show tonight on Badger live streams. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me what, uh, what, what, uh, what your topics are. Oh uh, yeah. So later today in about, uh, well, in about three hours, we're going to be doing the HBR news show. And on uh, this week's news show, we're going to talk about, uh, oh, man, I don't even know how to say this bitch's name. I'm going to say Jis Lane Maxwell. I think that's pretty close, yes. <laughs> and it's, I, I just, you know, because I, I get to put the word jizz in there. Jis Lane Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's former um, confidant, she was arrested. And uh, we're going to talk about, you know, all of the buzz around that um, and, and, you know, the likelihood of her possibly offing herself I, I heard already that she was put into covid quarantine so she may um she may not make it i don't know it, it doesn't look good we may not hear from her but we're going to talk about Gislaine maxwell and we're going to talk about the uh, protesters that were hit there were these two female protesters that were hit by a car on the freeway one of them died and um the other one i think is still in the uh, icu uh, we're going to talk about the removal of a, a statue of Frederick Douglass that was uh, vandalized and removed. Mm -hmm. uh, Frederick Douglass, the the uh, former uh, a slave and abolitionist, <laughs> because clearly he represented white supremacy. Mm -hmm. um, well, and then there's, oh, go ahead, Allison. Weren't they you thinking that it might have been a, a white supremacist who were angry at all the Confederate I, statues being removed that... Well, I know that there are people saying that, but I haven't seen any evidence of it. And I think that, um, uh, I don't think that, uh, let me put it this way, Allison. If white supremacists or white nationalist types went and pulled down that statue, I think that it would be a viral video all over the internet. Like everyone would know about it. CNN would be talking about it. And the fact that it was removed 
so covertly and quietly without any um, video or anything just makes me like press X to doubt that white nationalists did it. Now, because another another thing too is that um, a lot of the statues that were removed when people were interviewed about why they did it, the majority of them don't even know who those people are. So, like, a lot of the time, they're just taking statues down. They, you know, they don't even care about who it is. Mm -hmm. um, because they, it, they defaced and they tore down Abraham Lincoln, too. Wow. They literally, like, freed the slaves, Allison. Like, that, you know. So I don't think it's that much of a stretch that they would have taken down Frederick Douglass, because I'm telling you, if, if white nationalists did it, we wouldn't hear the end of it. Mm. Um, I don't think there's enough of them with enough testosterone to actually pull it off. But anyway, um, aside from that, we got a story of a Harvard graduate. You guys may have heard of her, the Asian woman on TikTok that was um, threatening to stab all mm -hmm. Lives Matter supporters. And then she lost her job and, you know, and essentially cancel culture came for someone who normally would support cancel culture. Mm hmm. And uh, lastly, uh, it's just a little story. We got the very short-lived stint of Brie Larson on YouTube, mm -hmm. where she started a YouTube channel to uh, that a focus on anti-racist rhetoric and inclusive content and where that went. So those are the stories. I think the Ghislaine Maxwell is probably the biggest one that I'd like to talk about the most, as well as a little bit about um, Frederick Douglass and those, those female protesters that got... Um, well, they got wasted, if, uh, to put it in Grand Theft Auto terms. I'm not laughing at them. I'm just laughing at the situation. So. No, I got you. I got you. No, I just, uh, I, uh, I popped in a card. So if you can go up there um, and uh, hit that, you can be taken to the stream and uh, enjoy those news items with Brian and the team. That's Hannah Wallen, Mike J, and Dr. Randomer Cam. And I know that yep. uh, people quite enjoy it. I, I, was I actually watched... A 60 minutes video on the uh, Weinstein case and Giselle, I think is the name. Giselle. Uh, Giselle? Yeah, I think it's Giselle, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I just, I, it, it looks like it's pronounced Ghislaine. Ghislaine Gis, Maxwell. She's, she's the, Ms. She's Maxwell. UK, so. Ms. Well. Yeah. Ghislaine. Oh, yeah, yeah I guess you're right. Uh, yeah, you Ghislaine up. Maxwell. She's got a weird ass, like, it's, yeah, like, it's, I guess it's a little the odd. equivalent of a ghetto name for, for the UK. Because. Yeah. So but I'll, I'll call her Ms. Maxwell. But apparently, according to some of the victims of Eric Weinstein, she was the, sort of the powerhouse. Like, she was almost the driver. Yeah. Sort of like a Carla Homolka situation. Like she, yeah, she supposedly participated in some of the abuse as well. Well, abuse, sex, whatever. And I also got so. the implication that a lot of the the people who were involved in all of this in this ring were women, like a lot of the ringleaders. Yep. And yeah, they were the they were the honeypot. They were lures for the young girls. Well, and, uh, I imagine they yeah, probably so. also appreciated the the abuse as well, because that's something I've noticed is that you you get like sort of a sociopathic man and. He ends up finding a woman who really seems to get into and enjoy the abuse that he perpetrates. And then she mm -hmm. just emboldens him to do even more. Yeah. Because, you know, women have that quality of almost justifying, being able to justify things mm -hmm. to men. It's like men take their moral cue from women. And if you get a really mm -hmm. deranged woman and really deranged men, that could be a very negative spiral really quickly, like Carla Hom Homolka. Um, yeah, it's absolutely. And also uh, a lot of Islamist power couples are like that too. Yeah. Like those like that well like that yeah, like those people in uh New Mexico that tried to essentially uh, uh parent a family of terrorists and it was the three I think there were three women and they were related and they were basically raising, mm -hmm. rearing, birthing and training these children. And then there were two men. One I think was the father and the other one was like a supply man that would run back and forth and bring them food and supplies yeah so, i also want to i want to mention i'm not sure why your your video is glitching like it looks like is it's it? fine yeah it's just some weird ass stuff is happening just give me a second here like this is my first try at well, <clears throat> this is my ahead. this is my first try at this particular kind of uh adventure as it were so i apologize if there's some glitching in I try to do this as best I can. I think that will fix it. 
Um, yeah. I know that was a little bit weird, but uh, let's see. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I think that's yeah. Sorry guys, I, I know this is a little bit of like seeing behind the hood, but uh, yeah, this is this is my first attempt at it. A, might, <clears throat> it might just be your internet connection because on my end, it's clean, man. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah, it's smooth over here. Oh, it's yeah? clean. It could just be that your your internet's a little, you know, <laughs> it's it's struggling. Yeah, I might be struggling you're, a bit. It's it's not the internet. It's the struggle. It's the struggle session with the internet. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so uh, we got two more super chats. One from Tyler Preston says, "In honor of the trolls known as feminists," and then uh, also American Dad gives us ten bucks and says, "Keep spreading your message." Logos is rising with your help. Thank you for uplifting my spirit. There is hope. Oh yeah, there always is hope. It's just um, yeah. like I, I there I, I sort of wanted to go back to this because you know the world has been so stressful lately so crazy but sometimes it's good to go back to just the nostalgic days of crazy feminist ranting and just be like it's, it's like going to this you know you, if you ha, if you're a kid and you lived in a city with a zoo and then you just go and you know and you and you, you you have all of these trips to the zoo that usually your your school would take you to the zoo and you'd sit there and you'd look you know, at the spider monkeys masturbating. Um, and then your teacher would be like, don't look at that. But, you know, you can't stop it. But anyway, it's like that. It's like you're you're old and you, you want to go and do something that you did when you were kids. So you go to the spider monkey enclosure and there they are masturbating again. Yes, there the feminists are masturbating again. Yep, that was the thing I saw as a kid. Sort of nostalgic. <laughs> I don't know, was that really gross? <laughs> I mean, it is, you know, if it's not that, it's fucking intellectual academic types that are masturbating. I mean, I've, I've already watched Eric Weinstein masturbate and on a live stream in front of everybody. Well, I guess I could deal with another feminist doing it. Yeah, so. I, I meant metaphorically. I mean, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's well, not on it. literally, Allison, we watched it. <laughs> I didn't mean literally. Oh, my God, that would be. I don't think that, uh, I think that YouTube would probably demonetize that. If not uh, yes. Yes. Yes, they would. Well, actually, they wouldn't if it was a feminist doing it. Literally, they'd find a way around that. But in You're probably any other, right. Uh, instance, yes. No, I'm, I'm, I think there there actually are YouTube videos of women masturbating for feminism that are up and like stuff like that. Because, well, honestly, if you if YouTube had to remove sexual content. Um, that even implied sex, there would be no feminist content on YouTube because feminists almost always talk about sex. It's like their whole, it's their whole world. I mean, look at this, look at this, like, and here's the thing. Okay. The essential premise of this article, which you'll, you'll be getting into also in the after show. So if you guys really enjoy the patron only show, the patron only show, if you want to, if you want to take part and talk and listen to Brian's take on this article, you have to go to feedthebadger.com, set up a subscription and then pop into our, our patron chat or our patron discord. Um, or you can just go to badger, badgernation.online and we can talk you through the process. But um, the, the premise of this, because you could say that men are constructing all of these phallic structures for the edification, for the sexual edification for, of women, you know, they're 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 displaying this. This is a this is a sexual display in in order to attract women. As uh, this is actually female gaze. And it, uh, to be honest, I would say that that's probably pretty close. That a lot of those men who are engaging in this kind of work, it is an aspect of reproductive fitness and wanting to display, you know, their power, their ability to cooperate, their ability, their their, their effect on the greater world, having the job, building the building, etc. You know, that is a sexual display, like a peacock's tail. And yet she frames it as men oppressing women, which is just so, if you think about it, it's so self-hating. I know it, I know we go through and it's, we talk about how it's sort of hatred of women, but it's also hatred of, or sorry, hatred of men, but it's also hatred of yourself. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, if female, you know, just imagine human women are pea, he pea hens. We're essentially saying, oh my God, that, that, that tail, that magnificent tail that you only have because we selected it throughout the entire generations. That is oppression of us. 
You know, you building that, that's oppression of us. You displaying it is oppression of us. It's almost a hatred of your own sexuality that she's displaying. A at the same time as she seems to be obsessed with the idea of making things overtly sexual, which really aren't. I mean, like a Peacock's Tale is, uh, I guess, a reproductive or sexual display, but it's not an overtly sexual thing. Maybe, I don't know. Do you see where I'm getting at? Oh, yeah, I do, I do. It's a, it's a yeah. hatred of his her own desire for men. A, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, what? for sure. She doesn't, I think that she um, probably resents the fact that she does find that attractive mm -hmm. and impressive. You know, it's like at war, she's at war with herself. In a lot of ways. Otherwise, I mean, oh. if she wasn't, it's like, uh, if she wasn't, I think she'd just get on with her life. And she'd be able to say, you know what, probably these buildings are the shape that they are in because land is expensive and to maximize it you have to build up i mean yep. she's in architecture she must have some understanding of that um if, unless she really want like she's she's thinking the thoughts she really is compelled to think she could just be dismissing this stuff so mm -hmm. either it's an expression of her hatred of her own desire which oh my goodness ouch ow 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 me 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 look you can't keep doing this or it's her programming. Or it's her programming, yeah. Sorry, guys. Mia's yeah. getting aggressive. All right. Uh, so we talked about the the what you're going to be doing on the show. Is Did you have any final thoughts on that particular article or anything? I haven't looked at it yet, so I'm not going to give any thoughts until I do the patron-only show. So yeah, because I'll do that. I guess my final analysis, if you will allow me to give my final analysis, Kat... Without chewing on my hand? My final analysis is that she could have framed all of this as men doing something for women, compelled to build an environment for women, compelled to show off their prowess at building and cooperating for women. She could have framed it in that way, but she chose not to. She framed it in a way that maximized her victimhood and resentment. And it's... It's a choice. Like she made that choice. And the question really becomes why was that the choice she made? Anyway, so I'm going to say, you know, if you enjoyed this, like, share, subscribe, like you say, like Brian says. And um, also, if you want to support the show, go to feedthebadger.com. If you want to take part in the patron only talk with Brian tonight, subscribe, uh, go to feedthebadger.com and, and start up a subscription. If you want to just talk to the the fellow badger fans in our discord badgernation.online and um yeah i think that uh i think you guys should go yeah and also go to badger live streams and yeah, subscribe go to, there go to badger I know live that streams there's a bunch of people that are subscribed here that are not subscribed over there that's where most of the content goes mm -hmm. what are you doing what do you go what to badger live streams and subscribe yeah exactly all right i'm, I'm tr what am i what i'm trying to actually point out there's a thing that i put up a card right here there's an eye you can hit the stream and it'll take you to your stream later today that's what i'm doing uh yeah that's what you're pointing to yep that's that's usually where the card yeah goes, exactly the cards go yeah. okay all right i'm all gonna right. say good night to y'all thank you for your super chats and I'll see you in a little bit yeah brian we'll see you in a little bit all right Bunch of live streams go over there yeah uh, now i gotta figure out how to stop this